So this is Mike Pence being interviewed by Laura Ingram about the <clears throat> the supposed imminent attacks that Qasem Soleimani was planning against U.S. interests in the Middle East. Let's take a look. Got lots of different feedback from the briefing. I was there. I was one of the briefers. Uh, I thought we did a dynamite job. Uh, I, I mean that in the truest sense. If we did our level best uh, to present them with all the facts. <laughs> I feel like if it was actually a, quote, dynamite job that Pence and the other briefers gave to these senators and members of Congress, then you wouldn't have had Republican senators like Mike Lee and Rand Paul coming out, come out and saying that they weren't briefed on anything that they didn't already know from the news, and basically it was a big sham, and they were hugely disappointed with the lack of information that they're provided about these so-called imminent attacks. So I wouldn't call that exactly a dynamite briefing that you and these other um, members uh, gave. We could in that setting, in a close setting, more than we can frankly say on your show. Uh, yeah, and even so, what was shared with them wasn't any more than what was already known just by looking at the news. So you didn't share anything that they already didn't know either. Uh, but Vice President Pence said to reveal more, any the compelling intel could have compromised sources and methods, Mr. Secretary. Does that mean that the intel briefers in this administration don't trust Congress with classified information? Because that's what it sounded like. But we shared we shared an awful lot with them yesterday. There are there are things that <laughs> what what it, if they had shared you know this uh, hugely illustrative you know data or information that was showing that Suleimani was planning an imminent threat, then, you know, uh, Paul and Lee would have came out and, and said that, you know, they're, they're Republicans, they support Trump, and if they had be presented with credible evidence, I think they would have came out and say that. So, you know, it's very telling that there are some Republican senators that are willing to buck the uh, neocon war hawk kind of Trump consensus on Iran, and I speak that speaks to me to the real lack of evidence about this imminent threat because we already knew that Suleimani was there on a peace mission, and obviously, you know, Ingram is not going to question Pompeo about that because that would just destroy the whole narrative that you know Fox is trying to um, put out there. Only certain members of Congress get to hear, and I know Senators Lee and Paul care about this a great deal. They want to protect the prerogatives of the legislative branch. Uh, they have a view of the War Powers Resolution. Uh, I think uh, members of Congress get frustrated by this sometimes, uh, and so this wasn't. They get frustrated when you know the Trump administration, without congressional approval, orders the assassination of a top Iranian leader in Iraq, put, potentially starting leading to a, you know, another world war and totally, you know, going around, um, you know, the, the Congr Congress's power to declare war. It's not something the executive branch gets to do, but I guess Pompeo is basically okay with a dictatorship. The Republican Democrat says this was executive legislative. And so I think there are uh, a number of people who are using this as a political axe to grind. I think that's most unfortunate. A political axe to grind by not by violating U.S. and international law. If that's a political axe to grind, then grind away. That axe needs to be ground the hill down. There is no doubt that there were a series of imminent attacks that were being plotted by Qasem Soleimani. We don't know precisely when, and we don't know precisely... <laughs> Oh my goodness, how can you go on with the straight face and just repeat this complete BS? So, Pompeo says, there's imminent attacks being planned, but we don't actually know when or where. When? When or where? Then, you know, you don't know when or where these imminent attacks are going to be taking place. Then they're not imminent, you... Jesus, you war hawk dude. Where? Chris. But it was real. Well, the president said Soleimani <laughs> wanted to blow up the... It was... It's not real if you don't know when or where it's going to happen. Jesus H. Christ. See, is that accurate? He wanted to blow up the uh, I It was his forces that uh, penetrated around. God damn. Suleimani did not want to blow up the U.S. Embassy. He was there on a peace mission trying to ease tensions between Iran and Iraq. And I, Iraq, 
between Iran and Saudi Arabia, I should say, and Iraq was playing the mediator in this um, this peace mission. See, just a handful of days before that, Khatib Hezbollah warriors orchestrated, directed by Qasem Soleimani himself. I don't think there's any doubt that Soleimani had intentions not only uh, to take action against our forces, our diplomats in Iraq, but in other countries around the region and world as well. John Kerry, your predecessor, also sounding off uh, on this operation, saying that America essentially destabilized a situation that had calmed down after the signing of the Iran deal. Yes, John Kerry is completely right on that account. The Iran nuclear deal was one of the best things that was um, accomplished under President Obama because it was easing the tensions between Iran and the United States super important and it brought in these other um, you know these other these other countries into the agreement Iran was in full compliance of it when the United States uh, pulled out of it and it was upsetting to both you know Iran as well as the other other countries and it was the start of Trump escalating tensions between Iran and the United States, the first step in that. Oh, that there was real verification in place. He also yes, said this. There, there is no way at all that the world is safer, that the United States is safer, that the region is safer yes. with the steps this president has taken. Sure. President is so fixated on undoing anything Barack Obama did. That he I think Kerry's right on that part. I think that is one of the reasons that Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal because Trump viewed it as one of the few kind of positive on Obama's, few positive things on Obama's record. And obviously that, you know, couldn't stand. So he had to just rip it up, even though they were in full compliance. And it was a good thing that they were and a good thing that we have that agreement with them willing to run the risk of outright war in the effort to uh, fulfill his fantasy. Yes, that's, that's, that's a fair point, Kerry. That's a fair point. So, again, just another member of the Trump administration. We saw that Pence was parodying lies about Iran and the Soleimani assassination during an interview on Fox and & Friends, and now we have Mike Pompeo going on Laura Ingram's show and, again, spouting more lies about Soleimani's assassination and the situation uh, with <clears throat> Iraq. And so this is uh, Chris Murphy, a senator from Connecticut, not ordered, just being plotted, no idea what, where, no idea when, say it with me, that's not imminent, agreed. <laughs> and then Adam Schiff, I've been a member of the intel community for over a decade, been briefed hundreds of times on threats, some imminent, some not. When targeting a top government official for killing, we don't know when precisely. Uh, we don't know when precisely where it <clears throat> does not constitute imminent, indeed. Um, and then, yeah, it says, you know, Pompeo is the driving force behind the Trump administration's hawkish Iran policies. It talks about the dynamite job. <clears throat> Oh, and it's pretty interesting. Um, in response to Pompeo's Fox interview, Representative Justin Amash, the independent who uh, switched from the Republican Party, tweeted, quote, this is about as much as they told Congress in a classified setting. Exactly. That's what, I w that's what um, both Senators uh, Rand Paul and Mike Lee had said, that they weren't privy to any information in these, um, you know, briefings about, about the supposed imminent threats that Soleimani was planning, and they didn't learn anything that they hadn't already seen or heard from listening to the news. Um, and then, so this is Bernie. The difficulty that we have, and I don't mean to be rude here, is that we have a president who is a pathologist pathological liar. Yes, that's true. Said Sanders, a 2020 Democratic presidential candidate. So it could be true. I guess it could be. Is it likely to be true? Probably not. No. And again, you know, Bernie and these other people need to do a better job of pointing out that Soleimani was in fact on in Iraq on a peace mission, peace mission when he was assassinated by the Trump administration. He wasn't there plotting some imminent threat. As we've seen, there's no evidence for that. Even, you know, Republican senators are coming out and saying that's that's bullshit. So um, 
the media, I mean, they won't do a better job because they want war just as much as Trump in a lot of ways because it's good for, for their business. But, you know, if they were you know, doing their jobs correctly, they would be pointing it out at every turn that it's been proven that Soleimani was in Iraq on a peace mission that should be pointed out repeatedly, you know, just my thoughts. So peace, 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 much love. Show your, um, uh, sh- Share your comments and questions in the comment sections down below.